Welcome to another episode of The Family Couch. Today, I'm so excited to have with us as our guest, Catherine O'Brien, and she's going to be talking about what to do after you bring your baby home, because it's so fun to have a kid, and then you got to bring it home and start raising it. (laughs) So we're going to talk about what that does to relationships and how to really be more effective in you know, kind of that after that after part, the, the rest of the journey once you bring your baby home. So, Catherine, thank you so much for being on with us today. Thank you, Mercedes, for having me. I'm super happy to be here. <laughs> and so, Catherine, can you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Um, so, yeah, like Mercedes says, I'm a psychotherapist I'm in Sacramento, California, and I have been practicing um, I'll age myself here, but for over 15 years as a therapist and for a long time, I, you know, I worked, you know, with individuals, I worked with couples, um, but I didn't really have a, like a, like a, like I knew I've always known I wanted to be a therapist, but I, I know I felt like I didn't really have my passion. Mm-hmm. And then I, um, had my son, my first child, um, he'll be eight this year. And, um, I thought I totally knew what I was doing and I was prepared and (laughs) I had a great relationship with my husband and everything was great up until after he got here and it was so much harder and I didn't realize um, the impact, right? Like I was so naive to the impact of how being exhausted, um, how having some new tiny person move into your home that's super demanding and does nothing in return for you um, would like totally affect your re- relationship, right? So um, <laughs> it was like, it was during those months, you know, following our son's birth that of course I was, you know, I loved him and I was happy to have him, but it was so challenging. It was hard and I cried <laughs> a lot more than I thought I would and just felt more of a disconnection from my husband. I was like, Oh, why, what is happening? You know? And so getting my own support, getting support for the both of us and then doing more and more research and listening to other moms as I would go to different moms groups and hearing their stories and being like, Oh gosh, I find it hard. And they're having even a harder time. I was like, what is this? And why didn't I know this? And why didn't I know this? And why didn't I know this? Like this would have made things so much easier and so it became like, I want to help other people not feel like this. Yeah. So, yeah. and now here I am like eight years later and it's like more and more fun and there's just more and more information and more and more support out there for, um, for moms, for couples, for dads, you know, because it's so, that relationship is so key for raising a healthy family. And so that's what I want to help other people do. So I love that. I love oh, that whole story. <laughs> And I'll say this as into your into your specialty with working with couples after they bring home their baby. What do you feel are some of the common issues that you see with couples when they're coming to you or when they're coming to your groups? What are they saying is their their hardest thing or the toughest thing that they're having to contend with? Well, I mean, I, they always usually it's always like we're communication. Like we're not on the same page. Um, you know, maybe mom will complain that dad doesn't help her out um, or, you know, whichever partner's working is like, Oh, like they do nothing. There's, you know, a lot of times we'll we'll hear just um, about like, well, I do more. Like I get up with the baby all night and I change all the diapers and I do this. And, and really, you know, there's research out there that shows that our perception of who's doing more is not really accurate, right? I mean, of course it's not because you're sleep deprived. And so as you're like keeping score, right, it's building up that resentment, building up that wall and making it harder to connect. So then when your partner does something, even if it's not, you know, to be, you know, even if it's just whatever it is, like we take that as a negative Mm -hmm. and like somehow against us. And so then, oh, we just put that there's another mark against them. And then it just, yeah, I just feel like that wall gets higher or spread out and just keeps us from connecting with each other. Right. So, so, but yeah, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, so it's like that communication piece is the first thing. So it's always like, well, how do we start talking about these things? Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes it's as simple as identifying like, Oh my gosh, I thought I was waking up more. 
no, I thought I was waking up. <laughs> and it's like, who knows? Because, right. you know, there's no way to really keep track of who's doing more because we have the roles are different and um, there's not, a fa- it's not fair. There's no way anyone's going to win at that, you know? Right. And so for couples who might be struggling with that, who might be feeling like, yeah, I am doing more, like they, maybe they do keep a tally or they yeah. do keep a schedule. You know, we yeah. have our phones now, so we tend to keep schedules of what we're doing, how many times yeah. we're feeding the baby, how many right. times we're waking up to, you know, change the baby. And of course, in those first few weeks, you're monitoring probably everything that's going on with the baby because you want right. to be aware of it. So what if someone says, well, I am doing more. I'm monitoring it all and I'm noticing I am doing more. How do they have that conversation? Well, I, and yeah, so... It, I, there goes the communication again, right? So I think it's like sitting down. Like I, I encourage my couples every day that you sit in and you check in. Like what's mm-hmm. what's working well? Like wh- you know, what what went well today, or where where did I struggle today? Or you know, asking your partner is like, you know, is there what did you need today that maybe you didn't have? Like mm-hmm. how can I support you? And vice versa, because even if one partner's back at work, it's like. I mean, that can have a whole level of stress as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, how was work today? Like, you know, right. how can I support you in that? <laughs> right. You know, or just listen right. to you, you know, and I know it can be hard sometimes if we're like, we're at home and we're like in this, you know, diapers and feeding and right. like we see nothing outside of our little cocoon. It's hard right. to kind of hear what other, what's going on with other people, but sometimes right. it's, it's also helpful to be like, okay, yeah, there is other things, you know, and I'm, you know, And it helps with that isolation and not feeling so like disconnected from everything. Cause you know, I'll hear from moms just feeling like, Oh, I'm just home and it's lonely. Mm -hmm. It can be lonely, even though you're with somebody all day long. So it's like finding those things to help like, with that isolation feeling. Yeah. And I feel like I'm kind of going off on a dip, bunch of different tangents here. So I'm like, did I answer your question? Yeah, no, I think you did. I think it's it's one of those moments where it's like there's so much going on that it is easy to be have tunnel vision for both parents. So the parent who's right. working is like, well, I'm working. And the parent who's at home is like, well, I'm at home all day. So you have that tunnel vision. Right. And sometimes it's hard to open up your perspective and say, oh, wait, yes, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, like I notice you. Like I think sometimes that's what happens is, it's all about the baby mm-hmm. that the he, dad doesn't feel noticed. Mm-hmm. Mom doesn't feel noticed, you know? And I think it's like, no, this is our time. Like I notice you, I see you. I, I right. hear that you're having a hard time or I hear, Oh, great. Good things went at work. Mm-hmm. Maybe things, it was a bad day at home. The baby, all they did, did was cry. But like, I hear you like, okay, how do I support you? How do I, cause we're on the same team, right? We got in this together. We're on the same team. Right. And, um, like, how do we support each other and get through this? Right. So. And I think, too, it's, you know, as you're talking, I know you talked about how you had a really great marriage before baby, and then baby came, and it was like, everything just kind of got, like, torn to shreds, so to speak. Like, we were like, oh, who is this right. person I married? So how do you, <laughs> how do you couples kind of manage, manage that transition from ha- being just two people who are two adults yeah. who kind of manage their lives in a really effective way to now having this <sighs> baby kind of come in and... It kind of is a change of identity, I think, in your marriage, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So I have these three questions that I, <laughs> that I always have, I, I recommend all my couples to ask. And it's what, part of what I call the postpartum plan, right? And, and when I, and these three questions I think are going to be important as old as your kids are, as old as they get. I mean, I don't know what my parents would say now since, you know, I'm well past being at home and stuff like that. But right. So the, the questions are like, what are, what are you guys going to do to, uh, or what are you going to do? And I always recommend that you have like two or three things listed at least, right. um, if, if not more of what are you going to do to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, right? Because mm-hmm. as a parent, as a person, we can't really help or do things for other people if we're not taking care of ourselves, right? Or we're not doing it to the best of our ability. You know, like they always say, like, you need to fill your cup. And I know it's hard to do. And I hear from moms all the time. It's so hard. There's all these other things we need to do. If we're doing something for ourselves, somehow we're taking away from other people. But I know, and believe me, I haven't always known this. It's like, I am such a better mom. I'm a better partner. I'm a better friend. I'm a better probably person in general (laughs) when I like have time for myself and I have self care, whatever that looks like. Like it looks different for other people. Like some people are like, I'd rather be by myself reading a book or no, just let me take and go hang out with my girlfriends or whatever it is, or I'm going to go play basketball with guys, whatever you want to do, exercise, whatever those things that help you 
fill up and rejuvenate is, Mm -hmm. is important, right? So it's making sure as partners, like how are we going to help each other make sure we're getting that every week, every day, you know, even like daily, what are, what's something small, like, you know, an hour every day, you're not able to go do certain things, but you know, it does change over time. And I know when the baby's small, smaller increments, right? Because I know it can be hard for especially whoever's home with the baby to leave the baby at times. So, so that's the first question. What are you guys going to do to make sure that each of you are getting that like self-care piece in? And then the other piece, the other question, the second one is like, what are you going to do to bond with your baby? Mm-hmm. And people are always like, what? Like, of course I'm going to bond. I'm feeding my baby. Okay. Yeah. So the, and then, and this is where I think it's important, especially in those early months with, um, for dads or for the partner, because, um, they don't, sometimes they don't feel like they have a role mm-hmm. or mom's doing everything. And I've, I've told moms this a lot and especially moms, the moms maybe like me that want, like, want everything a certain way, right? Like, yes. And we don't want to hear the baby cry. And we, you know, the diapers goes on like this and they wear this outfit and, yeah. you know, this is how the things need to be folded just exactly this way, yeah. right? And so dad or the partner comes in and starts to do something and he's not changing the diaper the right way. Like, right. you know, or the baby starts to cry or whatever. And we have to rush in and we take over and they can feel inadequate (laughs) they can feel like you know totally undermined or they're like well I guess I you know I don't need to do it so then they stop doing things right Mm -hmm. so you know letting them have the things that they do whether it's you know giving baths or even like taking the baby out for a walk while you're getting your self-care time like letting them do their thing and and I remind parents all the time it's like we each are going to have our own learning curve Mm -hmm. for how (laughs) we are with the baby like I had no baby experience prior to having a child like they just send you home with like I had no, I had no clue what I was doing my husband on the other hand thank goodness had had much younger siblings so he could change a diaper which was really ideal and I think he did for like the first week before it's like um, hello you've got to do this okay I'm a bit better but you know it, it can be vice versa you know where a lot of times you know the partner doesn't know how to do that so um I always think like let them do it and if the baby cries leave the room but let them figure it out because if you always go in and rescue them it's going to take them longer and it's going to be harder and then their ability I think to bond with the child as quickly is going to be slower and they and they say that it takes like seven to eight months for a for the partner to have as close a bond as the mom does but I don't know that it necessarily has to be that way if they are involved in doing things so let them do it let them figure out their way and it's okay for the baby to have it done different ways to have things done different ways. In fact, it's important for them to um, have things different. And it's, if dad's more, you know, rough and tumble and mom's more nurturing, that's fine. That's good. Right. So, um, and so then, you know, so bonding with the baby, of course, early on, but then I think always as our kids get older, it's like, what are we doing to really connect with them? Like, yeah, we take them to school and yeah, we do these things, but what are you doing like on a regular basis? Like, Hey, it's, it's you and me, it's us, we're, we're playing or we're reading books or we're, you know, doing these other things. So um, I think it's always something important to ask. So, um, and I have had moms tell me later, like, I'm so glad I hear your, I heard your voice say, let them do it their way, you know, <laughs> and I just laugh and then it's been so much easier, you know, because then that they're more involved and they're, they feel more capable and it makes your life easier, right? Right. So, um, so that's the second question. What are you going to do to make sure you're connecting bonding with your baby? And again, that's, you know, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, like what are those things that you, you'll make sure you get that one-on-one time with them. Right. So, and then the third question is, um, what are you guys going to do for your relationship? Like, right. How are you connecting? And so of course I, um, I recommend like a daily check-in, um, like um, John and Julie Gottman call it the stress-reducing conversation, super, super helpful. And, you know, there's evidence that that can be really helpful for um, decreasing perinatal mood and anxiety disorder. So I'm like, yeah, have that regular check-in, find out what's going on for the other partner. How, do, you know, like I said earlier, like, how do you support them? Yeah. And, um, and, and then what are you going to do like a weekly date? And, um, and I recommend that as early on as possible, like even that first week. And that can be like 
the baby's asleep and maybe the baby's right there sleeping and who knows how long that's going to happen, but that you guys are like sitting on the couch and, you know, maybe you play a game or, you know, but avoid, avoid being on the internet. Don't be scrolling your phone while you're watching a movie, you know, like even if it's a movie because you're exhausted, but you're sitting by each other on the couch, like do that, you know, but, and then, you know, as the child gets older and it's easier and you can, you can leave with them or you can leave just the two of you like yeah. always recommend that like yeah. what you know how are you going to make sure we get this undivided time every week and maybe it just starts off it's 30 minutes mm -hmm. but as they're older you're like hey i'm gone all week no i'm just kidding um, you know, but like you know doing like longer periods of time and right. i think that's so key and and i, I always joke and my husband just kind of shakes his head at me that like i we teach a workshop together for noon expecting parents. And I always joke like, I know when my husband and I need more time together because when he le like, because it annoys me if he leaves water on this, on and around the sink after shaving. Like if I find that annoying, like clearly we need to have more time together. Cause a lot of times I don't notice those things up until I feel like we're not connecting on other levels. And then all of a sudden it almost feels like, is he trying to annoy me? Is he trying to do those things, you know? But it, I mean, it, it's not, but I, I mean, I just think that's why it's so important to have like, it's our time. Like we're on the same team. Like we, we do have, we can have conversations and stuff, you know, I love and that, actually. talk I about love that whatever. Piece. Yeah. Yeah. I love that piece that you said, like, I can tell when we need more time together when little stuff like that starts to annoy me. You're like, all right, date time. Like we yeah. need to go do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you exactly. mentioned earlier something about mom guilt. And I wanted to know, do you feel like that sometimes kind of wedges, um, kind of creates a barrier to couples coming together because moms feel like they have to do everything. They have to get it right. And I feel like sometimes maybe dad or the other partner or the, the partner who's not doing as much caregiving doesn't have the same level of expectations to take care mm -hmm. of everything and be perfect. Do you think that's, that can be a barrier to couples reconnecting? Yeah, I think so. And I think sometimes, you know, like I'll hear like, um, like in mom's groups and then um, in therapy and stuff like that, I'll be like, well, I hear like you're supposed to do things all these ways. Like you're hearing things from everywhere, right? Like, like your baby needs to be only breastfed and you know, you should do it this way and they should be wearing um, just um, not disposable diapers, but uh, Cloth diapers. <laughs> cloth diapers, sorry. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why I could never think of that word, but like cloth diapers and you need to be making all their food and like all this stuff, like all this pressure, like I need to do it all this way. And so, and I think moms hear that a lot more than dads. Yes. Um, like either their dads aren't listening or they're not in these moms. They're not in these, they don't, dads don't have these same kind of groups moms right. do. Right. You know what I mean? So they're not hearing like all this like pressure stuff. So mom's all anxious and worried about it and wanting to do the right thing and what kind of vitamins and do I start this and do we do these vaccines or do we not do these vaccines and how do, you know, like all this stuff and we're getting bombarded all the time. And, and I think a lot of it stays in our head yeah. <laughs> and then dad's over here like, Hey, let's just go. And you're like, no, you can't take the baby out until they're this old because I did this <laughs> research. And you know, and yes. dad hasn't done that research typically. Yeah. I mean, don't, I mean, believe me, I do have the dads that have some anxieties and their own stuff like that as well. And that's, that's fine. But it's like, typically they don't have the same worries and concerns. And so I think it's hard for them to understand like where mom's coming from. And I think sometimes too, especially in those early months when we've been home and we're, maybe we're not used to being home and we're used to working and going out and doing things where you get like praised or get acknowledged for an accomplishment and you're at home and you're doing the same thing day in and day out and nothing is changing and nobody's ever happy. And you know, especially before the baby starts smiling, it can definitely be weary and stuff like that. You're like, they're not even like giving me any cues or anything back that they like what I'm doing, you know? Right. So um, right. it can be really hard. So I think, um, yeah, we do. I think as moms, we do, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves mm -hmm. and have a lot of expectations. And, you know, I hear all the time from moms worrying about what other moms are doing and mm -hmm. how we're supposed to do it. And, and I just try to say like, there's not one right way to parent. Yeah. Um, is figuring out what's right for you as your family, right? And doing that. And, you know, maybe you hear something and you're like, oh, that sounds good. And you take and you tweak things to fit your, your needs and the way that you do things, right? Because the most important thing is having a healthy, a happy baby that you're bonded with, that's right. bonded with you, right? That knows that when I cry, 
my parents respond to me like, and that I'm loved, right? right? That's the most important thing. So how you do that doesn't matter. And I know now from having a second child, like how I did things with my, my first is definitely not how I did things with my second because she totally has her own agenda on things and right. likes to throw, um, throw curveball all at us, which I think has really helped my perspective too. Um, and just that understanding, like there's, they don't come out the same, no. <laughs> the same parents no. No. and, and it's good. It's, it's a good, you know, it's a good dynamic and it right. keeps things exciting. So, right. Right. And yeah. so as we're, as we're doing that, you mentioned like sometimes dads don't always understand the mom's perspective and sometimes moms don't understand that dads are a little more lax. They don't have as many expectations. Mm-hmm. So how can, you know, if they're on those different wavelengths like that, how can they kind of reconnect so that way mom can say, okay, dad, maybe you're right. Maybe I can leave maybe mm-hmm. with grandma for a couple hours or we go to dinner. And then maybe dad can say, you know what, maybe you're right. Maybe I do need to be a little bit more meticulous about how I, I'm helping you with the house. Mm-hmm. Like how can they find that, that, that sweet spot, so to speak? Well, I mean, again, I think that's like checking in and listening and hearing yeah. and like, you know, validating, understanding and compromising and yeah. um, saying like, like, I know, like, this is important to you. This mm-hmm. isn't so much important to me. Like, how can I, what can I give and take, right. you know? Right. Um, like, like in the workshop I mentioned earlier that we do is we always talk, like, one of the first activities we do is, like, what are the major transition issues that, like, I'm yeah. worried about, that I'm concerned about, you know, yeah. and we identify and we talk about those. And then being able to look at each other's list and be like, Oh wow, that's something that you really, I didn't know. Yeah, like yeah. what's going on, what, what you're worried about, what, um, what, what you need, like, yeah, like how am I, yeah. how can I help support you in that? So even yeah. just being able to acknowledge like, how can I support you in that? Because I know if, if we're like on the same, if we're on the same team, if I'm supporting you, like things yeah. will be, you know, easier. Right. right. And so it's right. like not fighting things so much. I agree. And I think it can be, I do, I think it can be really good, like you said, to compromise and to really listen to the other person, because it doesn't mean that you're giving in or that mm-hmm. you're not getting your needs met, but it's really about everybody saying, these are my needs. And now how can we both help each other meet these needs? Maybe not every single one, but how right. can we help each other? Right. Well, and I think sometimes, and, and I find this too, it's like, it's not sometimes so much about getting our needs met. It's about having our partner hear that we have Mm -hmm. them and maybe it doesn't work, but we just want them to hear like, I have this and maybe it doesn't work. Like, like, Hey, I want to go to the gym every single day this week. And okay. Yeah. I hear that's really important to you. It's not going to work, but let's see what we can do. Let's like see how we can get this in because I know that when you do go to the gym, you are much easier to be around. So what can we tweak because it's not realistic to go, you know, every day kind of thing. And earlier on, I kind of wanted to bring back to this idea of support earlier on, you talked about using support and really having that support. And I think, do you think that that's something that that outside support, so not just mom and dad are the two parents, yeah. the two caregivers, but really asking for support of grandparents or, you know, siblings, older siblings that you have and things like that. Can that also help the couple figure oh. out how to get back to each other? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think it's, I think just expecting a mom and dad to be able to bring a baby in the world and do it by themselves is so not realistic. And yeah. I mean, you know, that's where the whole, there used to be these villages that help yeah. you raise your babies yeah. and stuff. And that's, just not it. And yeah. I know at least here in the Sacramento area, there's so many people that come from other places, right? So they have mm-hmm. like no family support and now they're trying to build like a friend community support. And I mean, that takes a while to be able to do, or especially like trust somebody with, your child or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I I mean, I think we really need that, right? Especially when you're exhausted or, you know, one partner has to go to work and one's home and you need somebody, hey, to come in and spot me because I was up all night long and I I can't get through the day or I'm really feeling isolated. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so how can you reach out to, you know, there's, you know, different moms groups. There's, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're affiliated with a church, you know, a lot of times Mm -hmm. there's like, um, you can get support through that. Yeah. Um, I all even recommend, highly recommend to people, especially if they don't have anyone that can come with them is like a postpartum doula or somebody mm-hmm. that can come in and help them out. Cause it's so, I mean, those early weeks can be. Yeah. Exhaustion. Like I never realized there was, like, yes. like, I don't, I mean, no, yeah. I've been up all night yeah. studying for a college exam. Like this is not like I could do, but when you're doing it day in and day out and you're mm-hmm. never getting 
a good quality chunk of sleep, you know, then right. like your body wears out. Like, yeah. like, I mean, they torture people with sleep deprivation. So, right. I mean, it's not a joke, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. And so, exactly. And yeah. So it's like, yeah, get the support because, you know, there's no awards given for doing it all on your own. Like, mm-hmm. and, and you're not weak for needing help. Like right. you, like everybody needs help. Like it's, right. it's imperative, I think, in um, being able to do it and to do it you know, where you feel healthy and you feel happy and you can enjoy it and you can, you know, so however, if you're a grandparent or you're somebody like, find out how you can support them right? so that, you know, like let them tell you. And a lot of times, and, and I'll tell new parents, this is like, you might not know what you, you might have an idea of what you think you want. Like maybe you think like, yeah, I don't want anyone to come for the first two weeks and then people yeah. can come. Yeah. And then you get in, you have the baby and you're like, holy crap, where is everybody? And then yeah. you change your mind. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's your prerogative, change your mind, yeah. but ask for what you need. Or sometimes I have the ones that are like, no, I thought I wanted help, but then I decided like, no, everybody go away, come later. Yeah. You know, so I think oftentimes we don't know how we're really going to feel. Mm-hmm. And so it's okay to change your mind. And I would be upfront with family or friends and say like, this is what I think I want. You know, I think this is how I want support to go. Right. I, it might change and I might decide later on like, no, I'm desperate for you to come and help me right, right. Um, and that's okay too because right. you don't know especially you know if you've never had a baby before right right you have no idea so and it's okay to change your mind and it's it's okay to ask for help and I always say like please ask for help please yes. ask for help yes yeah definitely. well you know Catherine I know we could talk about this at nauseum <laughs> such a it's such a rich <laughs> topic right but I definitely want to give us a space to or give you a space rather to share with us how we can connect with you and how we can learn more about the resources you offer okay yeah so I'm um I'm on I have a website it's happywithbaby.com um and I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and more recently, Instagram at, and they're all at happywithbaby.com. So that makes it easy mm-hmm. for me to remember <laughs> how to find myself, right. um, but hopefully helps other people and it's easy for them to find me. But right. um, yeah, so, and I do, I have like um, several resources on my webpage. I have a postpartum plan, just a, just um, some questions and stuff that you and your partner, you can download it and you guys can look over it. Um, and it, you can also look over it even if you've already had your baby or if you're planning to have one. Um, and then I just ha- I also have another one like 60 tips and ju- then yeah. some other articles and stuff. And um, uh, another thing about, you know, 10 ways to keep your relationship mm-hmm. strong when baby comes home. So yes. lots of things always coming up with new other things and hopefully, you know, providing helpful resources yeah. <laughs> for parents out there. So. Awesome. And if you're local to Sacramento, you have your workshops, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So we've been doing, I co-facilitate a workshop with my husband, actually. It's called Mine, Yours, Ours, Relationship Survival Guide to Baby's First Year, which um, we realized we, it'll be seven years this year that we've been teaching it together. um, Because it it literally, like, the year after I had our son turn one, that year he turned one, I had already had my outline and everything was like ready to teach a class. Like, how do you survive that first year? Because I barely did it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I was like, Here, what are the things that you need to know? So yeah, so we've been teaching that one. I also have a, a class um, for understanding your toddler um, in the process of revamping that one. So just, you know, basic things in there. We also talk about like self-care and that relationship, mm-hmm. but then also what is like, what are typical things that are normal for a toddler and how do you manage that behavior and stuff like that, like tantrums and stuff. And then I have one for, um, for moms only and it's um, finding your calm as a mom and just Mm. calming techniques. Cause you know, uh, I'll have moms like, Oh, I got mad and I yelled today. And it's like, cause we all do that. Right. So it's like, you know, how do you start to notice and how do you, what are some things that you can do like on a regular basis to kind of bring that sense of calm? So you're not feeling like, ah, I'm always angry and always upset and feeling like this is much harder than I really thought it would ever be. So. Right. Thank you. So all of those links will be in the show notes. Um, If you're listening and you want to check out what Catherine's doing, please feel free to click on those links, connect with Catherine and get the resources that you need. So Catherine, thank you so much for being on with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Mercedes. (laughs) I appreciate you having me. See ya. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>